Earth's oceans, by far its most important feature. They shape our climate, our culture, and our future. A watery home to 230,000 known species of creatures, much of the ocean's depths remain undiscovered. It is thought that more than two million marine species might be in existence. What else lies beneath the surface of these great oceans which cover all but a quarter of this planet? Could there be minefields upon minefields of yet to be discovered resources, exciting new species, miracle plants able to cure our incurable diseases, medicinal properties among the creatures of the deep, intriguing lessons from nature perhaps? Join us as we encounter the bountiful marine life of our oceans that unquestionably form the largest habitable and least explored environment on Earth. lies many fascinating untold stories and in this episode we take a look at life under the sea all this on animal encounters We seem to have the impression that our expansive oceans are pristine wonderlands. Under the surface, however, this is unfortunately not the case. Here too, as on land, the human footprint is far too obvious. Picture for a moment an empty ocean. No fish or marine life, perhaps only some lonely spirals of seaweed, calcified coral and endless water. Unrealistic? Not really. If we continue the way we do, this could become a reality all too soon, and then we'd be in trouble. On the other hand, if we all pull together and stem the tide of human greed, we could perpetuate the ocean's beauty, such as these sites, recorded off the coast of the spectacular Seychelles and the warm Indian Ocean islands off the east coast of Africa. The Seychelles is an archipelago of 115 islands forming one country spanning 1,500 kilometers in the Indian Ocean. These yet unspoilt islands are known for their pristine natural beauty, with many parts still entirely untouched by mankind. Geologically speaking, granite accounts for half the islands while the others are coral atolls. Many are uninhabited. A year-round comfortable tropical climate ensures that visitors are seldom disappointed by the weather. A great and beautiful variety of living species entices divers of all levels below the surface of these clear azure waters. We have decided to make the island of Pralin our base. Our first dive is not too far out from one of the beaches here on Pralin, in the waters surrounding a quaint little island by the name of St. Pierre. It's our first day in paradise and we can't wait to get into the water. As we submerge into the comfortably warm water, it feels at first as if we are in a giant clear blue swimming pool. During the next few days, we are going to try and capture the essence of this beautiful underwater world. Releasing up to 70% of the oxygen on the planet and producing nourishment for billions of people, 
we must accept that the oceans are truly our life support system. Large bodies of water in the form of currents move around the planet controlling the Earth's climate. A healthy ocean equals a healthy planet. We cannot survive without this engine producing vital quantities of food, medicine and jobs. The weather and climate are simply a response to the ocean conditions. Without the ocean, our planet would not be habitable. The ocean absorbs and releases heat so that our days are not too hot and our nights are not too cold. Our water and air are recycled by the ocean and 48% of the carbon inserted into the atmosphere by mankind is absorbed by the ocean. It is essential for life on Earth and we need to be good stewards of this precious part of the Earth. We are very pleased to see a hawksbill turtle, and he seems very interested in our camera. Or perhaps it is the reflection of himself in the lens that he's after. Hawksbill turtles sport a tapered head ending in a sharp point like a bird's beak, hence their name. They like to feed on certain sponges and are therefore found near reefs that provide these. They are sadly endangered as a species, like many sea turtles, due mostly to the impact of humans on the environment. In many places, hawksbill eggs are still eaten and they are often killed for their meat and their beautiful shells, even though this turtle has an internationally protected status. Another threat to them is that of fishing nets in which they are often accidentally trapped. Their numbers have decreased by 80% globally over the last century. Scuba diving is a unique experience. It's almost like flying. When I'm below the surface of the water, I'm in a three-dimensional plane. I can move up, down, left, right, forward, even backward. It's a little like going into space and escaping the terrestrial forces. There's no gravity, and the state of neutral buoyancy leaves me feeling free to go with the flow of the currents. Something else that I like is the absolute quietness. Quiet in terms of leaving behind the noise of the terrestrial world, but not void of sound. I hear my breathing, and I hear bubbles. I also hear the parrotfish as they scrape morsels of algae off the coral. There are no cell phones down here. Emails will have to wait. For the next 30 to 50 minutes, I will be alone with my thoughts in this enchanting world. Today we are going on a deep dive in an area where we hope to see some sharks. I sometimes wonder if God didn't purposely help man invent scuba equipment and the ability to breathe underwater so that we can experience this incredible underwater world. It amazes me that this cylinder that sits on my back continues to supply me with the breath of life. As we descend deeper and deeper, the color range shifts toward the blue end of the scale with water being 800 times denser than air, this density absorbs the short frequency light rays very quickly. To our eyes, these yellow Moorish idols have lost much of their bright, warm color. At 
30 meters, we spot our first gray reef shark. Soon we see another one circling overhead. For most divers, seeing sharks is the ultimate experience. Grey reef sharks are found from Easter Island in the east to South African waters in the west. They are one of the most common reef sharks in the Indo-Pacific Ocean and feed mainly on free-swimming bony fishes and cephalopods. Grey reef sharks are fast-swimming and agile predators. They are able to dominate many other shark species on the reef by their aggressive demeanor. That fish would do well in a personality contest on the reef. They always manage to impress, whether swimming alone or in a school. Today we find ourselves using all our energy to move forward because the current is very strong. Such conditions can cause divers to use up to 25% more oxygen than usual. Our air is running low and we realize that we need to make our way to the surface. I can't help but wonder what other natural treasures are waiting to be discovered here in the depths of the ocean. It is also wonderful to discover what the shallow waters have to offer. By putting on a mask and snorkel, you can easily venture out into water that is only a meter deep. These shallow waters, with abundant sea plants, contain an entirely different ecosystem and the colours seem so much brighter. This is also often the nursery for all types of fish and other sea creatures, the place where they grow up before venturing into the deep blue sea. Grey moray eels, being naturally shy, are often found alone in the open amongst seagrass beds. They hunt alone and at night. Squirrel fish also tend to be nocturnal and shelter in caves or under ledges during the daytime. Any disturbance causes them to emit a clearly heard staccato sound. This ability to chatter and its large eyes are characteristics which lend themselves to the name squirrelfish. Goldbar wrasse swim very quickly and seem to be continually on the lookout for food. Parrotfish play a vital role on the reef. As they feed, they assist in the production and distribution of coral sands in the reef biome. This helps prevent algae from choking the coral. The spectacular color of the powder blue surgeon is an indicator of its health. The intensity of the color indicates its level of wellness. These are just a few of the more than 1,000 species of fish that color the waters of the Seychelles. Only half an hour's ferry ride from Pralin brings you to La Digue, where it feels like you've gone back in time. Even today, cars are not encouraged and you're more welcome to use a bicycle or an ox cart and keep the pace of life here calm and peaceful. Among the fragrant vanilla orchards and white island ponies, this timeless oasis is also characterized by the great granite outcrops on the soft sandy beaches, which hint at the colorful teeming reefs below the waters.
Pralins beaches are wonderful, but visitors would be remiss to leave without a visit to Falay de Mai, a World Heritage Site. Coco de Mer palms dominate the landscape amid other tropical beauties. The uniquely shaped coconut bears the largest seed in the plant kingdom. Coral bleaching is a great threat to the world's coral reefs. This term is used to refer to the way the increased CO2 levels in the atmosphere directly affect the acidity levels of the oceans. The same phenomenon is responsible for the climate changes we see. Of all the ecosystems on Earth, some of the most biologically productive and diverse are our coral reefs. A quarter of all marine life live off them, even though they occupy less than 1% of the ocean's surface. Coral reefs represent coral communities of sea creatures that depend on each other for survival. This beneficial living together is a great example of symbiosis. An example of this symbiosis is the critical relationship between the coral polyp and microscopic algal cells called zooxanthellae that live inside them. The presence of zooxanthellae in the coral's tissue means that corals can use the photosynthetic ability of the zooxanthellae to capture the sun's energy, like a plant during the day, and feed on suspended particles and plankton in the water that they capture with their tentacles and digest, like an animal, at night. Without this mutually beneficial relationship between the coral reefs and the fish they provide food and shelter for, the whole system of life on a coral reef would fall apart. These reefs should be seen as the rainforests of the sea and should be protected. Imagine the medicinal discoveries that may still emanate from them. Apparently one half of all new cancer drug research focuses on marine organisms. Besides so many varieties of fish and coral, the ocean holds more surprises in the form of other interesting creatures. There are over 1,800 species of starfish and over 3,000 species of nudibranchs, or sea slugs, not to mention the beautiful sea fans or gorgonians, which are found throughout the oceans of the world, especially in the tropics and subtropics. Rays are spectacular ocean creatures and there are many types in the Seychelles. Most species live on the sea floor. Bottom-dwelling batoids are different from other fish in the way they breathe. They take in water through their spiracles rather than through the mouth. The smaller ray species uses the science of hydrodynamics. To make headway in the strong current, they use the slipstream created by the larger ray to save energy. Octopuses are known and named for their eight arms, usually featuring suction cups. Most octopus species have no internal skeleton, allowing their almost entirely soft bodies to squeeze through tight places.
It's time to return to home base and we signal for the boat to pick us up. When I see how the symbiotic relationships on the coral reef not only ensure survival, but also bring happiness and quality of life, I feel sure that this didn't just come about by chance. As humans, we can learn lessons from the reef. We can learn to help each other and work together for the common benefit of all God's creatures. When I look at the ocean, I see exquisite patterns. I see bouquets of vivid colors that arrest attention. I see shapes that are not only beautiful, but also functional. I see intricate design colors carefully placed to make an impact. I see technology, hydrodynamics, the natural science of fluids in motion. I see incredible thought that has gone into this creation and design. I see not only quantity, but beauty. In a world where success often means one or the other, in God's world, both quantity and quality coexist. I see personality, each type of fish with unique characteristics. I see community, symbiotic relationships, one hand washing the other. I see cooperation on a grand scale. I see individualists happy and efficient on their own. I see humor, funny faces and playful streaks. And I see majesty and dignity in the great creatures of the deep. Even in this hidden world under the ocean, I cannot help but see a mighty creative hand. I see God's creation and I am in awe. <laughs>